Today, we open up the most detailed parts of personality. After this video, you will both see how complex humans are, but you will also be able to see this specific traits in you, your partner, your children, parents and friends. There are six subcategories to each personality trait. So all in all, there are five times six subcategories plus honesty and humility personality trait that contains only five subcategories. All in all, 30 categories make up the human personality that we know of. Or I should say that this is the agreed upon model in the field of psychology. That does not mean it's the absolute truth. The scientific model clearly states there is no absolute truth. But with the scientific model, we can make every effort to exclude manipulation and bias. In reality, we can never do that, but we can aim for it. Extroversion is made up of the categories friendliness, gregariousness, assertiveness, activity level, excitement seeking, and cheerfulness. Friendly people like other people and show positive feelings towards others. They make close, intimate relationships and friends easy. Those who are low in friendliness are not cold and hostile, but they do not reach out to others and you will perceive them as distant and reserved. Gregarious people find the company of others stimulating and rewarding. They enjoy excitements of crowds. People that are low in gregariousness tend to feel overwhelmed by large crowds. They will tend to stay away from large crowds, but they do not dislike being with people. Their need for privacy is much greater than for individuals who score high. If a person is high in assertiveness, they tend to be leaders in groups. They like to speak out, take charge and direct the activities of others. If a person score low, they tend not to talk much and let others control the activities of groups. Active individuals lead fast-paced, busy lives and involve themselves in many activities. They move about quickly, energetically and vigorously. The ones who score low on the scale follow a more slower and more relaxed pace. High scores in excitement seeking are bored without high levels of stimulation. They love bright lights and hustle and bustle, and they are likely to take risks and seek thrills. Because of that, they do seek thrill-seeking activities. People with low scores will feel overwhelmed by noise and commotion. Cheerfulness measures positive moods and feelings, not negative emotions. People that are high in cheerfulness experience a range of positive feelings. For example, happiness, enthusiasm, optimism and joy. Low scores are not as prone to such energetic high spirits. Agreeableness is made up of the categories trust, morality, altruism, cooperation, modesty and sympathy. A person with high trust assumes that most people are fair, honest and have good intentions. Persons low in trust sees other people as selfish, devious and dangerous. People who are high in morality do not use manipulation when dealing with other people. That is why they are candid, frank and sincere. When a person is low in morality, they believe that a certain amount of deception in social relationships is necessary. People find it easy to relate to the people with high morality. People with low scores are not without principle or morals, but they are more guarded and less willing to reveal the whole truth. Altruistic people find helping other people rewarding, so they are generally willing to assist those who are in need. Altruistic people are self-fulfilled when doing things for others. Those people that are not altruistic do not particularly like helping those in need. For them, a request for help feels like an imposition rather than self-fulfillment. Individuals who score high on uh, cooperation dislike confrontations. They are willing to compromise or to deny their own needs to get along with others. Those who scored low on this scale are more likely to intimidate others to get their way. 
High scores in modesty do not like to claim that they are better than other people. In some cases, this attitude may derive from low self-confidence or self-esteem. Some people with high self-esteem find immodesty as inappropriate. And people who describe themselves as superior tend to be seen as arrogant. Sympathetic people are tender-hearted and compassionate. They feel the pain of others and are moved to pity. People low in sympathy are not affected by human suffering. They pride themselves on making judgments based on reason. They are more concerned with truth and impartial justice than mercy. Conscientiousness is made up of the categories self-efficiency, orderliness, dutifulness, achievement striving, self-discipline and cautiousness. Self-efficiency describes confidence in one's ability to do things. Those high in self-efficiency believe they have intelligence, drive, self-control, and they also believe it's necessary for achieving success. Low scores do not feel effective and may have a sense that they are not in control of their lives. People with high scores on orderliness are well organized. They like to live according to routines and schedules. They keep lists and make plans. Low scorers tend to be disorganized and scattered. Dutifulness reflects the strength of a person's sense of duty and obligation. Those who score high on this scale have a strong sense of moral obligation. Low scorers find contracts, rules and regulations confining. They are likely to be seen as unreliable or even irresponsible. Achievement striving individuals who score high on this scale strive hard to achieve excellence. Their drive to be recognized as successful keeps them on track towards their goals. They often have a strong sense of direction in life, but those high may be too single-minded and obsessed with their work. Low in achievement striving are content to get by with a minimal amount of work might be seen by others as lazy. Many people call self-discipline willpower. They refer to the ability to keep on doing a difficult or unpleasant task until completed. People who have high self-discipline do not procrastinate. They stay on track despite distractions. Those with low self-discipline procrastinate and show poor follow-through, often failing to complete tasks even task they want very much to complete. Cautiousness describes the disposition to think through possibilities before acting. People high in cautiousness take their time when making decisions. People low in cautiousness often say or do the first thing that comes to mind. They do not deliberate alternatives and the probable consequence of those alternatives. Emotionality or neuroticism is made up of the categories anxiety, anger, depression, self-consciousness, immoderation, and vulnerability. Anxiety, or the fight-or-flight system of the brain of anxious individuals, is too easily and too often engaged. Thus, people who are high in anxiety often feel like something dangerous is about to happen. They might be afraid of a specific situation or be generally fearful. They feel tense, jittery, nervous. Persons low in anxiety are generally calm and fearless. People high in anger feel enraged when things do not go their way. They are sensitive about being treated fairly. They also feel resentful and bitter when they feel they are being cheated. This scale measures the tendency to feel angry. Depending on a person's level of agreeableness, they will express annoyance and hostility in different ways. Being low in anger, do not get angry often or easily. Depression is measured by the tendency to feel sad, dejected and discouraged. High in depression lack energy and have difficulty initiating activities. Low in depression tends to be free from these depressive feelings. Self-conscious individuals are sensitive about what others think of them. Concern about rejection and ridicule cause them to feel shy and uncomfortable. They are embarrassed and often feel shamed. 
They fear that others will criticize or make fun of them are exaggerated and unrealistic. But their awkwardness and discomfort may make these fears a self-fulfilling prophecy. Low self-conscious people do not think that everyone is watching or judging them. They do not feel nervous in social situations. The moderate individuals feel strong cravings and urges that they have difficulty resisting. They are oriented towards short-term pleasures and rewards rather than long-term consequences. Low scores do not experience strong irresistible cravings. They also do not find themselves tempted to overindulge. High in vulnerability experience panic, confusion and helplessness when under pressure or stress. Low in vulnerability feel more poised, confident and clear thinking when stressed. Openness to exploration is made up of the categories imagination, artistic interests, emotionality, adventurousness, intellect and liberalism. To imaginative individuals, the real world is often too plain and ordinary. High scores on this scale use fantasy as a way of creating a richer, more interesting world. Low scores on this scale are more oriented to facts than fantasy. High scores on artistic interests love beauty both in art and in nature. They become involved and absorbed in artistic and natural events. They are not necessarily artistically trained nor talented, although many will be. They are interested in and appreciate natural and artificial beauty. Low scores lack aesthetic sensitivity and interests in arts. People high in emotionality have good access to and awareness of their own feelings. Low scores are less aware of their feelings and tend not to express their emotions. High in adventurousness are eager to try new activities, travel to foreign lands and experience different things. They find familiarity and routine boring and will take a new route home because it's different. Low scores tend to feel uncomfortable with change and prefer familiar routines. Intellect and artistic interest are central aspects of openness to experience. High scores on intellect love to play with ideas. They are open-minded to new and unusual ideas and like to debate intellectual issues. They enjoy riddles, puzzles and brain teasers. Low in intellect prefer dealing with either people or things rather than ideas. They regard intellectual exercise as a waste of time. Intellect should not be equated with intelligence. Intellect is an intellectual style, not an intellectual ability. High in intellect scores slightly higher than low intellect individuals on IQ tests. Psychological liberalism refers to a readiness to challenge authority, convention and traditional values in its most extreme form. Psychological liberalism can even represent outright hostility towards rules, sympathy with lawbreakers and a love for ambiguity, chaos and disorder. Psychological conservatives prefer the security and stability brought by conformity to traditions. Psychological liberalism and conservatism are not identical to political affiliation, but certainly have an incline individuals towards certain political parties. Honesty and humility is made up of the categories sincerity, fairness, greed avoidance and modesty. Sincerity assesses at what level you will be genuine in interpersonal relations. If you are low in sincerity, you will flatter others or pretend you like them. You will do that to get favors. But if you're high in sincerity, you will not want to manipulate others. Fairness assesses the tendency to avoid fraud and corruption. If you're low in fairness, you will be willing to gain by cheating or stealing. But if you're high in fairness, you will not take advantage of other individuals or of society at large. Greed avoidance assesses your tendency to be uninterested in possessing lavish wealth luxury goods and signs of high social status. If you are low in greed avoidance, then you will want to enjoy and to display your wealth and privileges. But if you're high in greed avoidance, you will not be especially motivated by monetary or social status considerations. Modesty assesses your tendency to be modest and unassuming. 
If you're low in modesty, you will consider yourself being superior and as entitled to privileges that others do not have. If you're high in modesty, you will see yourself as an ordinary person without claiming you need special treatment. By now you should be able to understand personalities and see the subcategories in yourself and others. You will also understand why others behave the way they do. You will also not expect things that are beyond their personality or yours, which is a good thing. Now get out there and start really seeing the true and honest side of humans. Thank you for watching and if you like this one, then please hit the like button, write a comment and I will see you in the next one.